the last thing that I wanted to do was just now walk you through uh, the, our business and I'd like to show you the way that Melbourne SEO services works. I'll get M Melissa to come up. I'm going to kind of drive through and I've got some different tabs open. I want to show you the critical client flow so you can turn back to uh, the page in the book that has the critical client flow example from Melbourne SEO services and I'll walk you through and I'll show you the bits and pieces. Um, it is on page five, and we'll see the, the practical application of this. <coughs> so we'll just kind of walk through a live application, and I want to show you the way it works in our business, and then I also want a few of you to be a little bit more quiet, particularly Bashka. Um, <laughs> that way you can l listen in, and also you, Sebastian, as well. So we're... we're um, we're going to have a look at the way that uh, we drive attention to the business, um, how we then convert the clients all the way through to delivery. We'll hop into our Asana. I'll show you the way System Hub works. I'll show you the systems. Um, get Melissa to chime in as well, just so you can see. Again, the big caution here is I'm, I'm showing you what the end product looks like. At the end of this, you're going to have to go back to the start, to where you are. But I think this is important just so you at least know we're heading in the right direction. Uh, but we just need to make it simple, and that's, that's really what systemology is about, the, the uh, seven-step process. So firstly, if we look at the critical client flow for Melbourne SEO services, we're talking about our target audience is franchisors. Um, when we did that profit analysis that we were talking about, Melissa and I agreed that uh, website bills were probably a great product for us to really focus on first, before we even do SEO, because it gives us a chance to work with clients, figure out if we like them, if we're a good fit, then we can actually offer them ongoing services. If we don't, we go, fantastic, great, there's your website. Um, so it's, it's a nice chance for us to, to qualify if it's a good, good client for us and if it's a good fit. Um, profit margin stacks up for us, like we, we ticked all of the boxes and it's a good on-road, like an on-ramp. If they come to a website, now we know they're probably interested in video, they're interested in SEO. So that's why it's really important up front when you're thinking about your critical client flow, you have to get the right target audience and the right product because that's what you end up system systemizing out and that's the thing that we're looking to scale. So you want to make sure that that's a, a really good choice. Um, so from the top, and I'll get you, Melissa, to probably to chime in once we get to, I'd say more the onboarding, because I kind of handle the, the marketing bit for the moment, which is, so we, we're dry, lead generating from a variety of different ways. So I've just done a search for uh, SEO services, uh, and we're ranking pretty well for SEO services as a term. So we get a good amount of traffic that way. Written a book, so I get some traffic coming from that way. Um, we run little advertisements so at the moment. We sponsored small business, big marketing for three months. Um, so we get a lot of traffic uh, through that. Um, we do a lot of stuff on YouTube. So there's a whole bunch of different ways. So if you imagine, this doesn't capture everything, but over time you want to build up multiple different traffic streams. And that's important because you never want to be single source dependent and you want to make sure you've got that well rounded out. Now when they get back to our website, there's a few, my engagement pieces is I've got a few things. I run a webinar that talks about, you know, uh, is your website leveraging these five big Google trends? Uh, a lot of the things people, their website won't leverage off those five big trends and then it gives rise to the idea, well, maybe you should rebuild your website. So this is a nice engagement piece. They want to find out more about those trends, but just by doing that, they've kind of self-qualified themselves as someone who probably could be a good candidate for uh, building uh, a website. Now there's other ways. Over time, you've seen just one engagement piece, but over time you'll figure out different target audiences and different hot buttons that appeal to them and you'll actually come up with different engagement pieces. So the webinar is one, but we also have a quiz. We use uh, Leads Hook, which is Nick's software, to um, calculate, we've created a quiz where someone can figure out the, the health and get an authority score for their website. So we kind of get them to measure themselves on a few things. At the end, the final step is enter your name and your details and we'll send you the customised report. So we've, there's actually a whole bunch of different uh, customised uh, engagement pieces and you'll build those out over time, but you have to start somewhere. That's why I always say just let's just pick one to start. Obviously, there's different ways that people can uh, engage with us. They can, at that point, if they're ready to go, they might take up an offer on the back of a webinar, they might fill out a form on the website, 
Um, they might pick up the phone and call us. Um, once they call us, the next step usually that we encourage them to take is to book in our discovery session. We call it a magnetic marketing plan. Usually happens with Melissa or myself or one of the team. And we take people through the process of uh, identifying we, we help map out their business, basically, kind of like a critical client flow, but exclusively for marketing. That's effectively what we do. Because then we can kind of show them this is really what you should build. And then, by the way, do you need a hand with that? We've got some options, whether it's a website rebuild or SEO, or whatever the case may be. Um, then I'll just log into this. I had opened this. Um, as I'm doing this, Melissa, are there any things as far as yeah. So far that you want um, to I think part of what Dave was saying before is um, we were talking about website builds as our kind of preferred entry point for a lot of our, our clients. And it's because I believe in a thing like a customer journey. And I'm sure you guys have heard of that before. You have to think about the way people are actually entering into the flow um, and where the next steps are from there. Because if you, if you have a really great product but, and they have a really great experience, then what happens next, right? What other things can you offer them? Can you upsell them? Can you cross sell them? Things like that. So the website build was a natural uh, selection for us to market because there were so many ways for, uh, for our clients to continue the journey if they chose to. So we gave them, it wasn't like a dead end basically. So it'd be interesting for you guys to have a think about your service or product. You know, Do I actually have a journey for these people? Because if they liked you, they're going to spend with you again, right? So. If you haven't thought about it, it's a, probably a really good time to think about that journey and that flow and what kind of spin-offs you'll probably have. You visionaries have some great ideas, I'm sure. <laughs> so now we're looking uh, inside our uh, System Hub account here. And fortunately, um, when the internet connection was lost, we, we've lost um, the tabs that I had open. <laughs> um, so I'm going to walk you through this. So, so I think the, the couple of key things that I wanted to show you, and I'll just open this over here. Um, firstly, uh, we have a, a system around how we handle incoming leads. So Gillian handles this. She does a lot of the pre-screening before it even gets to Melissa. You know, a step-by-step -step process for the way that phones handled. This is the way an incoming lead looks like for us. We use Infusionsoft. When it comes in, it looks like this. And then we talk about, you know, that's what it looks like if it comes through as a quiz that I showed you before. Then um, you know, how the sales team sets this up inside our uh, nutshell, which is our CRM for, for managing of, of leads. And we have a bit of a process on how that gets added in and also how we qualify the lead. So then the lead gets entered into this software here. We just use nutshell. Um, you, you might use some, something else, like it's really just where are you storing your leads. Like we could be doing that in Infusionsoft, but it's almost like I feel like for me, Infusionsoft um, handles the, the bulk communication. Once someone sticks their hand up and says, I'm interested in becoming a client, we want to manage that much cl more closely. We want to track what the conversation is. We want to um, have that all centralized. We want to get clear on what the products and services are. So that's why we use that. Look, there's plenty of different software out there. Does anyone use like a sales SaaS? What, what are someone's? Entreport. Entreport can do it. You, what's, what's that one? Hub, HubSpot. Pipe, pipe drive's another good one for sales. Yep. There's the, the qualification process and then Melissa would go ahead and then we'd, we'd book in that phone call and then they'd run um, the, the magnetic marketing plan. Now, if, if they're a good fit, then we'll go ahead and create a proposal for them. So we've got a variety of different proposals. There's a system for how we create proposals here and it kind of shows how we add in the pricing and the links and stuff like that. Um, this is what a uh, proposal uh, would look like. So I've got it in quotes. Uh, so we were talking about um, the website build. So here's a, here's a quote for our website build. So Melissa would have the chat. This would actually get customized. Usually it's this page here that gets customized based on the person. Uh, and then the proposal goes out. Now we use Nutshell, which I showed you before, as a way to keep following up with the person. The, um, Melissa will have the call. He'll say, Gillian, yep, this was all good. Can you prepare the proposal? Jill will go out and send out the proposal. All that'll get logged inside uh, Nutshell so we know where things are up to. And then Melissa can use 
the follow up, like, you know, we've got a process for how often we're following up, you know, did you get it? Are you ready to go? When's the start date? Those sorts of things. Then once we go, uh, then the next thing we do, so there's a point here where uh, there is the handover. So website, website build. Uh, and yeah, like I said, I'm just going to have to drive around with these tabs. So this is, Simon earlier was talking about this idea of overview systems versus very deep work instructions on a specific thing. This is an overall, uh, overall system for the delivery of a web build. So it's a long thing. It talks about the sales team, the handover, and you'll notice here, might even be able to resize that slightly just to make sure we're not running off the edge of the page. Okay, so we can see here step number one, this is when this system takes over is when uh, the salesperson does the handover email. So Melissa makes the sale or Jillian makes the sale and then there's a, a, an email template down here for the sales, so the salesperson, Melissa would send this and CC in accounts, right? And say, hey, to Mr. Prospect, um, great to chat with you earlier. I'm gonna connect you with Sally in accounts. Sally's gonna get you into the system. Here are the billing details I've got. By the way, you're buying a website build, 50% upfront, 50% on completion. Now Sally gets this, and then we have a little bit of a look up here underneath our accounts team. Now the accounts team steps in. They send email two, which is the invoice, the questionnaire, and the expectations. Uh, and then there's an email template down here where Sally would go, oh great, just to let you know, in a moment you're going to get an invoice from zero. And um, we'll get you to fill out this questionnaire and also go check out this video around expectations, like what, what to expect when working with Melbourne SEO, what does the timeline look like, that sort of thing. Is this all manual or is it an automation? Um, manual, yep, so we, we do, uh, parts of it you'll see once we get into Asana are a little bit more, we do most manual. That, that, that's one thing I, I had learned. There's a few, uh, and Simon was actually referencing the person earlier who went heavy on um, Zapier integration to try and make some of these things automatically done. Uh, and then what would happen is Zaps would break and things wouldn't go out. We actually find... Yeah, I, I'd like to chime in on that, yeah. only that um, I think no matter, again, the human element, I think no matter how much we try and um, automate things, because automation is really good, right? But when you're, when you're talking about... Um, the expectation and the and the delivery of something and how the impression you make upon someone. Uh, there's nothing worse than when you get something and you just know it's all automated, all automated when you've made a big purchase. You, you kind of want to feel a little bit like there are people that are dealing with it. So there's a certain point where we actually kind of uh, delegate out other things that are a little bit more automated. But during this initial first, and it's not, not really first impressions, but it kind of is, we want to make sure that these people know that we're real. And also, as you all know, everyone has different personalities. So sometimes you have to tweak up that email. It can't always be exactly that. There might be a time to chime in and say something like a comment that will connect them and feel a little good. Or Sally might go, oh, they're already a client from two months ago. I don't need to give them the questionnaire. It'll just annoy them to fill out another one. So I, I remove that. So we do That's do it manually. One. Yeah, the we do it manually. is a common one. Um, yeah. And the other thing is we're not selling $300 websites, you know, we're selling something that they're paying for service as well. Yeah. Sometimes people are happy to pay more if they know they're going to get the result they're happy with. Yeah, that's a good so, point. So we, I think it may be on the costing, the costing of it. If it's a smaller ticket item and it's not worth the time, then yeah, I think automation is definitely the, you know, would be make more sense. But. Yeah, you know, and there's, in, there's systems here around the, um, you know, setting up and, uh, of invoices, how that's done, out, um, sending it out of zero. Uh, then we go back to this overall system. Part of what the accounts person does is then they jump into Asana, our project management tool, and set up the project that will man manage this whole thing. And then the accounts can actually wait uh, until payment has been made and then flag for the operations team, it's time for you to go. We don't start work with a client until they've made that deposit or made that first payment. Uh, so otherwise, you know, sometimes you've got that thing, especially if you're in service-based business, you know, you kind of start doing work and then you're chasing the person for payment, whereas they're much quicker to pay if they know, we're not going to do anything until you pay. Then we'll actually start work. So, so far in this system, you've got three different departments. Yep. How does each one know when... <laughs> 
when to do what they need to do. Oh, can I answer that? <laughs> <laughs> this is my space, sorry. Um, this is an overall system. Right, so sales have their own systems and they have their own management process and the things that they do, and that's part of their everyday job, right? And then so does accounts, so does operations. So I liken it to like the first domino. You tick the first domino and everyone gets a little, you know, tick as it goes down. So what happens is the first trigger is the sales team, once they actually make the sale, this, the CCing in of the of, of accounts with the email template, accounts immediately knows, that's my trigger, I have to go in and I have to do the next step. Then what happens is that Sally and accounts will set up that Asana workspace, and then she assigns it to the project manager and goes, project manager, there's, an, a, there's a new project coming up. Stay tuned for the, the payment, right? Project manager knows, okay, I'm at the ready. I'm waiting for my step. So it's a little bit like a domino. They kind of, or, or who did the really good, like, baton analogy? I can't remember. Oh, Jamie. Jamie. Yeah. <laughs> so um, where you're just passing it on. It's exactly that. It, we, we kind of go passing the baton on next, next. And just as a side note too, since everyone does their own little things, that overall system wasn't just pulled out of our heads. That was everyone coming together, putting their little bits and pieces in. And nobody really sits there and goes through every single step of that system every single time. We just do our little components of it based on when the baton is passed. And you'll see when we look in Asana and I show you the different departments, because I'll show you the way that a project works. In here we have a project that houses all of the different products and services that we sell. That's, that's what you'll see in this middle column here. Um, everything from SEO to um, website builds to videos to whatever. Now these are um, master templates that effectively then get duplicated. So let's say someone makes the website purchase uh, we, we would then duplicate this website build here, which would have the client name and, you know, uh, sorry, accounts, accounts would duplicate this. And then we scroll down here, it links to the relevant system, so that's where the overall system is. And then here, these are the key milestones in getting the job complete. So this is what a project manager oversees this and then would be assigning the individual steps to people when it is their time to do something. Again, a little bit of hum human automation there. Uh, and then we'll have a look down here. Some of these systems, depending, like let's say we look at the SEO one just here, I'll click on SEO. There are sub steps sometimes underneath and there are also, well like Simon showed earlier, we don't have work instructions detailed too heavily inside your project management tool. That lives in uh, System Hub. So there's the system. If, you, if let's say Nilia got assigned the uh, map out the site task and with the client name and she was given the set due date on when it's done, if she didn't know how to do it, then there's the system on how she can do it as well. So the, the project is outlined with all of the key milestones. At this point, the project manager steps in and uh, am I missing anything for the way that you would run that? Um, no, it's, it's really cute how he, the um, visionary is telling you how this, <laughs> how this is done. Um, but no, no, that's, that's effectively what it is. So the baton gets passed to the project manager. And the project manager knows the next step is. And, and if you go back to the top level, Dave, this so all, no, uh, top, very top level of your website build. So pro, uh, the project manager knows <clears throat> they're overseeing it. So whoever's, whoever's assigned that top level task, we work from top to bottom, so if you just scroll down a little bit, they literally sort of start to work top to bottom. Customer service is a little bit different. There's some touch points that happen, but it effectively works from top there to bottom. There you go, invoice. So, so, yeah. so I was talking about Sally. Sally would tick off that she sent the invoice and got the questionnaire. Then we save the questionnaire details into a Dropbox. That then gets assigned to the project manager and they do the initial check. And then we kind of move into the project. The web team steps in and they set up the uh, staging server and yeah. then things progress from there. And, and some interesting points other than the fact that this is systemized and it's replicable and it can be taught to anybody um, I mean I'll, I'll have a little confession to make part of this was to get Dave off the team's back and, and no joke he used to just email people all the time where, where they were at with to? things. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Where is this up to? Where is this up to? We go, look in Sonnet, look in a Sonnet. So what uh, that top level does is that the business owner, the project manager, if a client calls, customer service person on the phone can actually hop in and go, you're up to here. Oh, yeah, we're waiting on this from you or whatever. So it allowed for a lot of transparency on a project because we like to update our clients every week. 
And the only way for us to be able to do that was to know at any time where projects are. So um, any integrators in the room, it's a really good way to get your business owner off your back. <laughs> um, and then you have a look down here, we kind of keep moving down and then that's when um, the sales comes back in. The, we're handing over at this point in time and that's when sales then step back into the project. Now looking inside uh, system hub here, Oh, there you go. There's the, there's the offboarding component as well. So there's offboarding, that's when the post sales team steps in. There's some videos to explain different parts and here are most of the email templates. So as they'll go through, you might get a stage one email saying, hey, you're up to stage one, we want you to review and give us major feedback. And all of this is human done because we're tailoring it and we're offering a tailored solution but we're kind of 80 percent of the way there the client is paying for our 100 percent solution and they're only seeing the final deliverable and we're able to give something that feels quite heavily customizable but we've already done 80 percent of the work so we're able to deliver it much more efficiently which then heavily increases our you know our margin because we can run systems like this and then it gives a great experience to them and then we can do the extra magic that other companies don't do you know we'll send weekly updates who sends weekly updates we do every Friday we send an email to the client to say here's where you're up to here's what we've done here's what you need to do now that from a customer service point of view just blows people away it's very difficult for people to replicate you've got a good shot at it now that you know what we're doing um, but but we've, we've custom done this now and then really we're just doing the final optimization over the top. Um, so then we're talking about the delivery, then we go to kind of handover. Let me just see if I had any other ones in here that would be useful. Um, yeah, there's the site mapping. So that was that thing with SEO. Uh, okay, the, uh, one, one thing, another area I was going to show, and this is something I was chatting with um, Matt about, uh, and we were talking about, well, what I showed you there is how everything is delivered for your critical client flow. That, that's the delivery of your product or service. Now we need to think about, well, how do we systemize the other departments? What are the other functions I talked about? The systems required for scale. How do I get that happening on a systemized manner? The way that we do that is if you use your um, DRRC, you've already identified what the different departments are. You set up projects related to those departments. And then the tasks, what, what you're looking at here is um, our finance department. So you can see, what, um, firstly, uh, yeah, some administrative things. Um, then we've got once off tasks will hop up here. Uh, regular tasks, failed transactions, team member bonuses, and you'll notice I click on these and then there are systems underneath that. We move down here, like I, I want Sally to send me and Melissa a, an email every Monday on how we're going finance wise and she'll, I, she knows the key numbers, she'll update it and then email it to us. Team wages, so if we have a look at team wages, there's a system on how wages are paid and then Sally will put the notes and then summaries in there. And you kind of move down, there are monthly tasks, quarterly tasks, and annual tasks. So if you think about it, these are everything that falls outside of your CCF, you relate it to a department, and then this is a great way to go, what does the finance person actually do? When, if, if we're inducting someone like into the business, we can go, well, here are all the things that you're responsible for. I don't know if there's any extras you wanted to add to the way um, the departments work? What the way the departments work? Yeah. No, I think you no. covered it off pretty good. Yeah, I think there's a question up the front remind there. Them to do it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so the question was, does uh, Asana remind them? So, so what we actually do then inside here, um, each one of these gets assigned. So the next wages due are on the first of the month. So, so that's now assigned to Sally and she's got the due date. And the final step in the task is she sets up the next one. So she'll make wages and then the final step is for her to set up the reminder for her to do it next time. Same with things like BAS, you know, we do, the thing, documents need to get sent to our um, bookkeeper who prepares the BAS. So she's got that recurring and it's in here so it reminds her to send the forms off and then she'll get the reminder. So she, the team heavily work out of Asana. Um, sometimes you'll see me jump in and out, like where I won't answer for weeks and then one night everybody will hop into their Asana and I'll call it Asana spam and I'll let everybody know on Skype, I'll say get ready for some Asana spam and I'll go through and just comment on a whole lot of things. But everybody else 
uh, uh, is working out of here on a daily basis because this informs what task they're doing and when things are due. A question we might mic, yeah. So just watching this, it's it's like you've almost moved away from spreadsheets as checklists. You've pretty much their inter interactive checklists with the inner sana, so you've got visibility and accountability. It's yeah, so it's more than just a checklist, it's communication. So um our project manager is assigned to the overall task. They assign, say, the subtask in. And if the due date falls overdue, the accountability kicks in. So why haven't you done? And they communicate within the subtasks and they make comments to each other. So it's like, it's like the checklist, but like the ultimate checklist, because you don't have to then have a phone call or try and chase up. You have the conversation within the actual subtask. And, and that's why one of the key things I wanted to get from uh, Simon's presentation is the distinction between project management and then the documentation management. Project management handles who does what by when. So that's what's going on in Asana, who is doing what, when it is due, and if there's any conversation related to that. It, it'll live in Asana. That's the other key thing. A project management tool is amazing for having a central source of truth for where things are up to. You want to get it out of the inbox. I'll respond to things and I'll ask people things directly and Melissa goes, you should really be directing that and assigning a task inside Asana. I've gotten to the point where I just write Asana. Yeah, because <laughs> then the, the accountability is there. It's, it's out of my yeah. head and I don't have to worry about is it done? Isn't it done? Yep. It's in Asana. There's a paper trail there. It's going to get done. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, very good like that. Yep. Okay. Just a quick one on a side note. You ever thought about making your own project management tool? Yeah. We initially we had thought about doing it with System Hub, uh, and then I made a very clear line in the sand. I've seen people try and do it. There are. Uh, tools that try and do both project management and systems documentation management and where I feel they let it down they do neither very well and, and project management is actually solved very well the problem I see and the reason we created system hub is that they've there, there's feature bloat and and the the thing with systems and, and Simon rightly pointed out is uh, features with systems and processes, it's oftentimes the enemy of getting systems in place because then you have to train your staff up. There's different bells and whistles that have to be explained. Uh, systems should be simple. Like we, we, for the longest of time, operated out of Dropbox uh, until we realised we kind of outgrew that with some permission type things. That's a great place to start. But, but I don't know if, if we will, because I actually think that problem's already been solved. The problem that I felt hasn't been solved very well is what, why we created System Hub. Also, I think just as a, as a point on that too, because that's a good question. I think with, uh, with something like Asana, um, for someone that does keyword research, I can tell you now, they're not going to open up System Hub and go, step one. I'm going to do this step two, step three. They're not going to go through it like that. that. That's really more for as they're doing the process, they might find a better way and then they go into System Hub and they might tweak it up. Or if it's for somebody like the secondary person who's going to step in while someone's on holidays, they refer to the system. Or when we're training in somebody new, Asana itself, when MJ or Terry, they get the keyword research task, they don't really need to go to System Hub. They're so well-oiled machines. They know what they're doing. So having all of the steps and all of the processes within the project management is sort of like overdoing it. It's over engineering what, what we're using it for. Um, but that's another reality too, is that people aren't going to sit there and look at the systems over and over and over again. Don't you need them to be accountable to that? Isn't that the idea? Well, yeah, that's what the that's checklist, what the that's management. what the subtasks oh, so are. Still yeah, they yeah. have to tick it off, yeah. yeah. But meaning that they don't have within their task in Asana, step one, step oh, two, okay. step three, of how to actually execute the task. It's time to site map. They know what to do. If they forgot, they go to System Hub, but then they tick off in Asana, I've done and that And them task. ticking off kind of is their way of saying, yes, I've followed the process. Yeah. Otherwise, there's now an opportunity for the project manager to step in if they ticked it off and it wasn't done to the yeah. standard. Well, clearly you've got to go review the documentation. Exactly. Or it wasn't in the documentation, something was missing. Yeah, so we kind of grab... Um, you just touched on it briefly, but could you expand a little bit on how you utilise Slack and Asana and System Hub to get around the um, scourge of the inbox? Yeah, so uh, we still haven't migrated to Slack. We still use Skype. 
which is sad. Skype is just a sad beast. Um, <laughs> but, you know, sometimes it's better the devil you know. At some point we might look at Slack. We looked at it briefly, mm, but it didn't yeah. quite do what we want. And then you got to choose your battles. Yeah, Melissa is kind of like weighing up. What's, what's the, the pros that we're going to get here? I mean, we're already doing all of the documentation related to projects inside Asana. Yeah. So do we really want to introduce that? The reason we use Skype is so, because we're a virtual team, like Melissa's in Doreen, Gillian's in Port Melbourne, Sally's in Coburg, Adrian's in Bacchus Marsh. Um, so everybody's all kind of dotted around. Max is probably the closest one to the office. I think. <laughs> uh, but yeah. we all work uh, very virtually. Yeah. So Skype is just uh, like we have a group chat. It's the water cooler. It you know? is. Hey, yeah. how's it going? Good morning. Yep, that, that's what we use Skype for, phone calls, that sort of thing. We use uh, Zoom for group meetings when we have team meetings and things like that. Um, and then Asana is just all to do with the projects. So to get out of the inbox, um, we'll assign things into Asana and we'll assign the task out to the individual and you only email the person or message them on Skype if it's super urgent. And you don't say, can you solve this problem? You give them the Asana yeah. link and yep. say, hey, can you go comment on this? Everyone hear that? <laughs>